Bolton football next season. In a few minutes, a rare insight to life behind the scenes at Elm Park on match day. But first, a report on last night's one-all draw at Stockport. Another gutsy performance from Reading as Jeremy Pearce now reports. Stockport's direct style had the Reading defence a full stretch during the first half. Adrian Williams heading this effort off the line. But Reading held out until just four minutes before half-time, when Mike Flynn's long throw was headed in by the six-foot-seven-inch Kevin Francis, his 32nd goal of the season. But Reading took control in the second half. Jimmy Quinn had two efforts cleared off the line. But Stockport still posed danger on the break, and Francis was so close to putting the game beyond Reading's reach. His shot drifting just the wrong side of Shaka Heslop's post. But Reading got their reward with just 13 minutes left. Adrian Williams released Quinn, and his low cross was bundled in by Mick Gooding for the equaliser. And the Royals might have snatched victory late on when Quinn's header hit the post. But the striker was satisfied with the result. We knew it was going to be tough and we had to settle for a point before the game. Uh, we were under a lot of pressure in the first half, but the second half uh, got in a half time. The gaffers told us to, you know, try and pass the ball about and that. And uh, we caused them a lot of problems in the second half. And at the end of the day, we could have got one or two more goals. Jimmy Quinn satisfied with a point. I think the manager was as well, wasn't he? Yeah, I was well satisfied. It was important uh, for us not to lose the game to allow Stockport to be too close to us, but we've, we've kept them at bay and it was a good result. Tough match, hostile atmosphere? Well, it was a big match for both teams and they expect that. And I think it's the sort of atmosphere players enjoy playing in. Certainly it's the sort of atmosphere I enjoy managing in and uh, you know, I enjoyed it. Well, I think we can have a look at the uh, table. Victory tomorrow at home to Brighton would secure... And the passion. I try to make it a kind of nervous day, you know, make it different from other days because it's not like other days, it is a match day, it's the most important day of the, of the week for us, it's the, the thing that we've all worked for, we train all week, uh, no matter what you do at training, it's all about what happens on a Saturday, so you've got to try and instill some sort of difference and some sort of feeling into Saturdays, and I try and do that by, by, by building up the atmosphere and by trying to make people a little bit nervous and, uh, and, and it works. In those days we get there at quarter to two and I've got one thing in my head and Colin's got another. Uh, uh, we've got three or four different options and we've left it on a Friday. We've both been turning it over in our minds overnight. 99% of the, 100% well, of the time actually, we eventually come to a conclusion that we agree on. In the dressing room, the day's lineup is confirmed. Outside, the opposition arrive from South Wales. It's Swansea's turn to try and derail the Royals. The matchday mascot is also a privileged visitor. Doesn't seem to distract my players. Um, I know some managers wouldn't allow that. I do. Um, at that point, we're starting to um, get players who are maybe going to need uh, strappings and things. The team's already been announced. We get that done. We sit down. We lock the door at two o'clock. Usually Colin and I, Colin Lee and myself, have one or two things to say to them, just final reminders of things we've worked on during the week. And then we just release the players to go on and do their own thing. Of course, it doesn't always run smoothly. Yes, won't you? Two players have not arrived yet. Two players are late, so Shaka Hislop and Keith McPherson receive a warm welcome. We can, hey, we can do this easily or we can do <laughs> Poor punctuality incurs a fine, but how much? 20. 20. Do you want me to have yeah. another 25. <laughs> 20. 20. Man management plays a key role in this environment. 25 minutes. The 14 people sat in this room were our best 14. Now we've got everybody back that we need back. We've got everybody back that got us 8 points and 10 points ahead at the top of the league. Right? We've got 10 games to go. I said to you yesterday, and some of you would understand really what I was talking about. I'll try to explain myself again. The games at this end of the 10 games, the, the more you win at this end, obviously, easier it makes it. You, will be, you won't believe how quickly it will look so different if we win the next two games. They win the next two games or suddenly you'll see daylight. At the moment you're saying we still will need all those points. You get them towards single figures and it suddenly looks a lot, lot easier. So let's make sure that we give it everything today. 
I think I, think I play and uh, include Colin in it, a vital role, you know. I mean, I get shouts from behind the dugout, oh, sit down, McGee, and all that stuff, you know. And I've got to ignore that because the players know, and I know that we have a very important role to play from the side, reminding people of their jobs, pointing out things that maybe we hadn't seen in other teams. We watch other teams, but maybe they're doing something or someone's playing somewhere or doing something that we hadn't anticipated and maybe one of our team or some of our team hasn't noticed it. Half time against Swansea, still nil-nil. The manager wants more from his players. I've never seen anybody win so many balls against you two as that big guy there, which is the least we expect off of him. Am I right? Let's see you go and win them and attack them. And let's see you when the ball's get knocked over the top and you're running out there. Don't worry about keeping possession and coming out and playing. If the ball's back forward in there, then if he doesn't spin in behind it to get on the end, it, we'll ask him one. But we're putting ourselves under pressure because we're not doing it in the right areas. Till the free kick. If it's up in there, you know, 10 yards inside here, do what you've done. Otherwise, let's use a bit of common sense. Let's use a bit of savvy, eh? Yeah. Don't be giving the ball away in those areas. Jokesy, you've got to start. You've done nothing. Yes. Absolutely nothing. Yeah, that's right. Now we've got Jonesy and Razor sitting in the bench, champion to go on. So go out. And show us that you want to do it, or you as well just come and sit beside us. And as soon as we get a throw in, we we'll see you on your heels back on the line saying, go on, put it in the corner and I'll spin off him. We don't want to see you running away inside here, but we know, what well, do you know? Or we know you can't get the ball. We want to see you down there where we can get the ball you and your feet. We win another throw in, we'll get it in the last third, and then you can do your stuff. So as soon as we win the ball, let's see you look to go forward. It's the thing we said the other week. You go forward, we're running, you're running this week. You're running this way all the time when we've got the ball. If they get the ball, we expect you to run back. When we've got the ball, we want you to try and get forward, not try to get back towards if you get the ball. Yes. The half-time pep talk barely over before Swansea had the temerity to take the lead. But just as the manager demanded at half-time, Michael Jilks began attacking defenders. His reward, a penalty. Converted by Jimmy Quinn. And when Stuart Lovell weighed in with the winning goal, the satisfaction around Elm Park was complete. All week we train for the game. When you win the game, you've done your job. Um, when you win it and you did feel you deserve to win it and done it in a, in a reasonably good way, then you get all the more satisfaction. The crowd, in no small way, were, were responsible for Michael Jokes' second half performance. They got behind him, they urged him on, they pushed him on, they demanded out of Michael Jokes what we were trying to get out of him. And you know, if they can do that for us in the next four home games, then we will win those games and we will be promoted. As you've said, other results have went for us. We're six points clear at the top of the league, and really, um, I'll enjoy my. Uh, my, well, I'm not caviar, but I'm sure I If they win this today to make sure of promotion and the championship, a double Jimmy Quinn matched with his 38th and 39th goals of an amazing season. The first from the penalty spot eased the tension a touch, and when the second went in, in the final minute, the party could begin. It's Reading's first title since they won the old third division. Just before Easter, Brentford season.